All right, and let's go and get started. Howdy, howdy, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shark and Bear, and welcome to the channel where today we're going to be checking out the 1.0 release of Halls of Torment. And the best way I can describe uh, Halls of Torment is recently we played a game called Jotun Slayer. Um, I can't remember the subtitle for that game, but Jotun Slayer, which I said was essentially a uh, Diablo style game uh, mixed with uh, Vampire Survivor. However, if we want to go back even further, I would say that that was more akin to like a Diablo 3, like a Diablo 4. And Hells of Torment is more or less channeling the powers and energy of uh, Diablo 1 and 2 in those genres. So this is like Diablo 1 and 2 mixed with Vampire Survivor. But even though those tags are similar for those games, uh, as far as like, um, you know, similar in the Diablo style game, these two have very much different things going on for it. Uh, so in the case of uh, Halls of Torment here, it's got a number of progression systems that are already put in place uh, that feel vastly different from what Jotun Slayer had. Uh, for right now, I am actually checking out the Sorceress. As you play the game, you'll unlock different characters. You start out with the uh, the swordsman right here. And it looks like now they have tooltips over on the right side to show you what kind of weapon they start out with. Uh, we also have ourselves the Warlock the pyromancer i believe that's what this is called exterminator sorry uh then we have the norseman which was the last character to be added in the game the cleric the archer the lanchnecht the shield maiden and the beast hunters uh now those are some of those classes i have yet to play not much i haven't played a lot of the norsemen although i manage on i think i'm going to be playing a lot of it a lot of the norsemen in the future just mostly because of the fact that uh i uh genuinely like like norse mythology and stuff like that so that sounds pretty fun uh but we're gonna do uh showcasing the sorceress and more or less that's because i put a lot more time into this character so uh as far as let's turn the music down just a little bit more uh as far as like um skill progression and stuff like that i've made it a little bit further so the way skill progression works is you'll find this thing over here it's called the quest board and it's got uh so I guess first, I guess we got to show off the register of halls. So here we have a set number of levels. You start off with the haunted caverns. Uh, then you get the ember grounds, the forgotten viaduct, the frozen depths, the chamber of dissonance. And I actually don't know if I've ever done the chamber of dissonance. Now I think about it, we might do that one. I think maybe I have, I just can't recall it that well. Uh, but once you've picked a level, you go upon that with your character, you slay enemies, you find loot, you come back. Uh, so over here, what we do is we have a quest board and for each of the levels that's currently in the game, you have a slew of achievements here. Each of these achievements, once you've completed it, we'll do something cool, like unlocking a character, uh, giving you a gold reward to purchase stuff for the meta currency, uh, unlocking new traits and passives for whenever you're playing in the game and unlocking new pieces of gear. Uh, you can even go so far as to finding a, uh, skill tree for each of the characters. So we actually go to, I believe for the, um, the sorceress you have the story lightning of the storm or lightning storm and here you have a whole bunch of achievements that based on this will unlock different things for the character so it looks like right here uh if i wanted to get the a thousand gold reward on this one i need to block 90 attacks in one go if i want to unlock the thunder crown i need to apply spark 100,000 times uh apply 20 seconds sparks on a single enemy to get lightning affinity i guess that would increase our increase our lightning damage uh, stuff like that so uh looks like we have an upgrade for fireball if we deal 200 100 critical hits with a single meteor okay so definitely something we want to shoot for but you want to try to maximize uh these uh skills in order to basically get the most out of a single character uh so that's pretty good and every character has their own skill tree over here is the shrine of torment which is apparently like a new thing for the game we might actually check this one out um we might well we'll see we'll see how this works i don't think there's an end to it which is the reason why um i'm not too keen on jumping into it right now uh and then we have the shrine of blessings i'm actually going to redo this because we are in fact playing a different character than i was playing earlier i was playing the exterminator who used burn damage uh but right now we are working on a sorceress so i mean we i might want to pick different uh loadout for her uh, so like attack range and you know, I actually want to boost my attack speed because I feel like she might be a little bit slower to attack. I want to boost our spark damage because we do want to get the most out of spark damage. Let's do a little bit on the projectile size and the range, uh, pickup range. I'm going to do like one thing of that. I'm going to take one health upgrade. And then for the other stuff, uh, yeah, probably maximize our damage. Uh, let's get some health cap. Did I see movement somewhere as well? We might, I guess I don't see movement. I thought there was a, uh, oh, there it is. It's at the way top. I'm going to go ahead and maximize our movement uh, capacity. Uh, take a couple points in our health regeneration. A couple in our defense. And I think pretty much else. Anything else we pick up is just going to be a boon to us. 
Uh, let's see. We maximize our damage, our spark, and our attack speed. Uh, attack range could probably go with that, but I'm going to do maybe another point in health. There we go. And I don't think I can afford a rank in anything else. Uh, actually, you know what? We'll do uh, attack, the uh, attack range. So there we go. That's our Shrine of Blessing. So you basically roll a character with the stats that you want there. And finally, we have ourselves the Well Keeper. So uh, as we find gear in the game, we're essentially able to extract one piece of gear back out to the overworld, essentially. When we find it in the map, we can equip it. Or if we have enough gear equipped already and we want to be able to take that gear with us, I think you either have to survive with that gear in your inventory or you have to extract it using one, one of the couple of wells that are hidden in each dungeon. If you put a piece of item in that well, it sends it back up top and to the well keeper here who you can then purchase the item from and it becomes yours permanently. Uh, so these are the items I have yet to purchase from him. And over here in this chest is my item stash. It is here that I'm able to basically customize all the stuff that I would like to use for this character. Uh, on kill, gain a charge every 1.7 uh, seconds. Uh, charge decreased by 33%. Oh, so this one's for attack speed. Uh, I don't think I really burn damage. You know what? I am going to go ahead and I'm going to keep the wind uh, crown. We can also look at our necklace here. I think the one we have is great damage bonus based on champions, elite bosses, lords killed with the uh, spark equipped. I think we're actually going to stay with that. Although having the gatherers charm would be really nice as well. Uh, for rings, we have 15% or plus 15 base damage on hit with physical damage. Chance to spawn a shockwave deals 40% of the damage. The original that could actually be pretty nice. We could summon imps. We could summon skeletons. We can change our damage to fire. We can change our main damage to lightning. Adds a 10% uh, spark chance. I might actually take the spark chance. Because uh, I think by default we are doing lightning damage. But I want to be on the safe side there. And I think we might also... Uh, I think we're going to go with the... What do we want to go here? Um, let's, do, uh, let's do crit chance. I think it would be nice. And then we also have our chest piece we got to concern ourselves with. On kill, 5% uh, chance of extra one health. Uh, each kill causes uh, charges it, increasing damage with the diminishing returns. We can also go for something a little bit tankier. Uh, actually, I believe we need to equip something because we need a block. I believe we had a thing that says uh, we need to work on blocking. Uh, our boots-wise, we currently have 20% additional movement speed. Uh, generate shockwaves when moving. Shockwaves deal 100 damage and have a 20%. You know what? We're going to go with that because uh, spark theme stuff. And then for our final piece, we have 30% attack speed, hitting burning enemies, or 100% pickup range. We're going to go with the quick hand gloves that I already have equipped. And I don't believe... Oh, we do have a mark here. Uh, let see. It allows you to pick up... Okay, so this allows you to pick up different traits that the other classes offer. So that's pretty cool. Um... I think we're good though. I think we're gonna stay with the standard sorceress stuff. So the sorceress gear, and now we have the time to jump into the mission. What is this guy? Oh, and then finally, one of the other things they equipped, uh, they added to the game was this guy right here called the scripter. Please join me for a moment. So essentially, as you're playing through the game, you will find these shards right here. I can't remember what they're called. I think they're called like agony shards or whatever. And this is now a new meta progression currency they added to the game, which you can se select a character, and then you can use those shards to increase passive stats about your character. So that's a new thing they've added in uh, for people to take adv uh, advantage of. I've only played enough to play, you know, one game and see what it's like. I am going to go ahead and check out this Haunted Cavern. No, the Haunted Cavern. The Chamber of Dissonance, because I don't remember that. So that being said, if you like this sort of content, you want to see more games like this here on the channel, make sure you like, subscribe, comment down below, and what you think of the game. And let's jump into Chamber of Dissonance. I don't know how far we're going to make it if I'm even going to survive the encounter. Uh, but that is neither here nor there. We're still going to do our best. So at the start, you'll find this little blue book right here, or yellow book, and we'll be able to pick a skill here that we'll be able to take on our own. We'll also level up and we'll gain skills as we go as well. Uh, we are a thunder-based character, so it might behoove us to take something like lightning sparks. There is no um, like definitive uh, build that you should be using. It's just all about how you feel like you want to build your character. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take uh, lightning sparks. And now we're going to be on our way. And it looks like immediately we have access to, um, whatchamacallit, the, uh, our lightning seal really fast. 
Uh, see, we're also going to level up, and as we go, we're going to be able to pick different passives to our character. Uh, you can re-roll, uh, but I believe you can only do that, like, one time uh, per the round, per the potion. There's also, like, a potion system that you can make. I haven't invested a lot into that just yet. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and raise our block strength here. And luckily, it seems like our attack speed is doing really well. I'm also going to increase our uh, attack speed chance, or our attack speed, and we're going to start working our way to one of these yellow pages. If you notice on the uh, outside of our um, screen here, like on the edges, you'll see that we have indicators telling us which directions to go in. Uh, we also picked up lore bits there. I didn't actually mean to skip through that. Is this anything right here? Nope. Okay, I guess not. Uh, but as we go through... Uh, we're trying to make our way to these objectives on the outside of the map because, of course, these yellow pages over here are new skills that our characters can learn that are just free out in the world. Uh, other than that, the only way we're going to be able to learn new skills is by tackling elites that we find in the game. Uh, they will show up at different points in time, uh, more or less, and as we kill them, we'll be able to um, learn the skills that they bring with us. Uh, I think we're also going to go ahead and get some base health and as the game goes on we'll get more XP we'll get uh, more skills and all that sort of jazz and we'll also get more enemies flooding on screen uh, I think proficiency or uh, stances is something that I add new proficient stances uh, so we can also go with I think we're going to go with the weapon, weapon proficiency strikes here uh, 10 main force damage um, attack speed and multi-strike chance so that adds another projectile that could be pretty good I'm also going to work on settings a little bit more you know I'm actually going to just uh, I'll tune it after I'll get done at whenever I edit the video I'll turn down the audio just a little bit more I do recognize it's a little loud on my end so I do apologize for that in advance if that is being heard by you guys uh, we're also going to do with a 20% chance uh, for the lightning to actually critically strike that's awesome more critical strikes is uh, good news. And I can't tell whether or not our lightning is actually critically striking or not. Let me move my mouse off the screen. It's bothering me. It's over there in the corner. And we can even break open the different jars and uh, items that we see around the map dotted. And I'm lucky enough to say that I believe that for the most part, maybe our... Um, Lightning is hitting stuff fast enough that it doesn't have to hit us. I'm going to go ahead and go with block strength here. Mostly because, again, I do want to level up my block. In case we do get melee hit a little bit. And we do need to work on getting melee hit occasionally. We don't have a lot of health. But we can take upgrades that increase the health that we have. As well as getting ourselves that health regen. What happens if I... Get, am I going to get close? I wonder if I... So I took a hit there. I don't know if that, uh, there's no like tracker or anything like that. Uh, and then let's see. Critical chance and area radius. Ooh, that could be good. And there's our first elite popping up right there. Let's say we can actually get him. And as you can see, there's also a pulse around us. That's actually our main skill, I believe. The lightning strikes is, uh, the lightning strikes that we have going off. That's actually the skill up there at the top, I want to believe. But this pulse. This is a real ability. Uh, let's go ahead and get ourselves a bigger area. And uh, while this elite is just chasing us and he's just trying to get in melee range to uh, swing, I do want to point out that as we go, other enemies will show up and they will actually use skills and abilities. So it's not just they're trying to get to me. We'll even have uh, some range units show up that offer... Um, uh, some more challenges to us. Let's go ahead and pick up our skill here. Uh, let's see, we have the choice of arcane splinters. Uh, this basically shoots out ninja stars made of arcane energy, and then they retract back to you after a time. Astronomer's orb, which is like just orbiting orbs around us that hit enemies. They don't take damage or anything like that, and they're always there. And apparently, they also increase your movement speed. And then we have Frost Avalanche, emits four projectiles in a di diagonal directions, deals mediocre direct damage, but also has a chance to apply frost. I'm going to go with the Astronomer's orb. And like when we keep enemies on the outside, as you can see right there, we do a lot of damage. 
And so the next three abilities that we have, it doesn't look like we can re-roll any of these. Although you can opt to not take uh, any of these abilities, and you can actually use a scroll of mastery uh, to look like you get an XP bonus, apparently. Uh, so I think maybe I'm just going to go with... Let's go with Phantom Needles, uh, because that is going to add another damaging ability to it, and that one's actually pretty good. Uh, I am going to go ahead and increase the damage of the astrometer or the astronomer's orbs. And as we level up, we'll also be able to get upgrades that increase different facets of that as well. All right. Uh, next thing, I think we're going to go in strength. Strength overall just increases the damage the abilities do. It's not just a melee type ability. And we're gonna work our way to the next scroll that we see over here on the left hand of the screen. Uh, now we do see that our goal over here, by the way, in the bottom right hand corner is that we have 26 minutes and 19 seconds left, which uh, to my knowledge, that means that we have ourselves a 30 minute timer on the clock in order to finish the map. The map is randomly generated. There are treasures and trinkets hidden all over the map. There's ingredients and stuff like that. Some of them will show up over time. Others just need to be found um and others uh are just listed on your map as is you might be able to kill enemies and find gear chests so it's important we find uh gear chests as quick as we can and then determine which ones are valuable to us and then we can then instinctively decide whether or not we need to extract that based on if we have it already in our set or if we want to you know deter determine which piece of armor we want to save and purchase later because you don't get to take everything with you unfortunately you have to pick and choose fortunately sometimes you get duplicates and that makes the choice a little bit easier and we'll see how it works you can even get the option to swap out the gear that you have on with the pieces that you find so that's good news too so if i were to find a piece of gear i uh i would then be able to swap out a piece if i find something better than what i currently have equipped I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's go with the let's see improves dim, uh, different diameters depending on the weapon skill ability. Please check their stats to learn which are affected by force. Okay, so I guess uh, not everything is affected by force. We'll go ahead and do the fire rate of Phantom Needle because it is a very strong skill. And the good thing is we are getting more enemies in our melee, so there is a chance we'll be able to use the, utilize the block, perhaps. Uh, let's go ahead and use this Lightning Strikes 2 for the quicker attack speed on that one. And if we do get hit, we do have the option of finding health potions and or regenning the damage we took. I'm going to go ahead and get a 30% damage buff on our main hand weapon. So now we should be hitting a little bit harder there. Now we're just going to dance in here in the middle of all these enemies. I uh, am also going to go ahead and look at... Let's do the Astronomer's Orb Density again, increasing that damage crit bonus and reducing the radius yet again. Usually whenever you find like hordes or raids like this coming on you, uh, they are coming at you, you... Uh, you're looking at fighting an elite fairly soon, like. So, it looks like we are fine. There's a health potion right here we can pick up. Give us ourselves another little health boost. Uh, we can also look at... Let's do attack speed. I'm hoping that we'll get some health options. Health regen. Health boosting stuff. Uh, doesn't look like that's the case. Let's do some more block strength. Uh, then we also have multi-strike, which is our chance to throw extra projectiles out, which is always a good thing. As a sorceress, you gotta remember that because you're a magic caster, chances are you want to be a little bit more on the offensive side, not the defensive. Uh, we'll increase our spark chance on our spark damage. That is a key component to our skill tree, or talent tree, or traits, or whatever you want to call it. Our story. Uh, then we increase. Oh, there's some extra health right there. That's what it says at 682 health. And there's our next elite.
All right. Um, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and work on this guy if we can. I think for the most part we might be able to stay here and just deal with this guy. I think most everything that's going to be damaging to us is going to be able to be one shot. Looks like we did take a heavy hit there from whatever that thing was. But he is almost dead. There's that. We got Kugel Blitz and Electrified Orbs. Depending on their movement speed, orbs deal additional lightning damage and can apply spark to enemies. I think that's a good thing. So we've modified our Astronomer's Orbs. And what I really need to find is uh, a health potion. We need to break some of these uh, jars here. Oh, looks like we found a carrot there. And we can make our way up to the... Uh, what should we call it? Other uh, tome page up here. Oh, we got a potion there, as well as a, a, a wedge of cheese, it looks like. And we're a little bit... We're not too far away from the next tome page. It's going to give us another ability. Hopefully it's another active ability that we can use, or like it'll give us a choice of an ability that we take over another passive. We do need to get more abilities. We can look up there in the top right-hand corner of our screen and see that we do have spots for three more active abilities that we can use. Uh, looks like we have Meteor Strike, Flame Strike, and Ring of Blades as the options for us. We're going to go ahead and choose Meteor Strike. I do remember thinking that we needed to hit a certain number of enemies with a certain number of, um, what should we call it? Or the, with a certain powered Meteor. Like, it's got to do certain amount of damage, I believe. Looks like the enemies have thinned out a bit, but they will be back in force here in a little bit. I believe these guys... Yeah, they do an AoE explosion when they die, so we gotta be careful of those. I don't know if it's a proximity thing, or if it's just whenever that we get close to them. I think it's, I think it's whenever they take so much damage, not necessarily when they get close to us. Uh, the other two indicators over here, by the way, on our screen on the right side, one looks like a bucket. That is our extraction, essentially, more or less. Whenever we find an item that we uh, want to keep, we can take that to our well, and then it'll be taken top side. And then the other one is a hand that will collect any uh, uncollected XP that is currently on the map and bring it directly to us. We'll go ahead and cr uh, grab our movement speed here. And it looks like we do have another elite. It was currently looking to target me. And uh, hit me with some of its uh, arcane laser attacks. I've not fought this one before. It looks like this one leaves patches on the ground we got to be careful of. Oh, oh wow, okay. We took a, a lot of extra damage there that I wasn't expecting. Uh, we'll increase our damage by 10%. Oh, we got hit twice. I uh, definitely need to be playing a little bit more warily now. Oh, shoot. We walked right through that fire. No bueno on our part. Uh, I am hope Again, no. Uh, let's try re-rolling. Let's do the area radius. And if I could find a solid one potion, I, I think I'd be in a better state. We do have a little bit of health regen, but as you can see, it ticks very, very slowly. Oh, it's a, a the enemy uh, repositioned to the north of us. Maybe we can make it to the the the, uh, the magnet hand. Oh, that could have been been bad. Oh, there's a potion. Nice, just a little bit healthier. I'm hoping this uh, magnet hand will get us a couple of levels of XP. Why does that thing have full health? I was pretty confident we had done damage to it. 
Uh, let's go ahead and go with the... Let's go to base defense. And then, uh, let's see, 10% health. Twenty percent crit chance, sure. Yeah, all that XP is gonna be really good. We'll do uh, multi strike. We're gonna become just like a very tanky sorceress, I think. Man, we're still getting levels. Uh, extra health regen, absolutely. Don't touch me. Uh, let's do crit chance. All right, so that one's dead. I hope there's an, another one. This one is explosive strikes. Oh, there was multiple of these things. Okay, I wasn't aware that we were fighting multiple. Well, that's good to know. What are we going to do now? Uh, let's do in the AoE right there. The fire. Oh, we stood in that fire. That's not great. But I think we do have the win on this elite right here. There we go. Oh, and dropped a uh, gear. So now we got three gear cho choices here. We have the Holy Relic, the Thunder Charge Gauntlets, crit chance, increase on damage with Spark, uh, decrease on damage with main weapon, has diminishing returns, or enables you to revive once. So we already had these uh, Thunder Charge Gauntlets, you can tell, because the ones we don't have are marked with an asterisk here in the top left-hand corner of those items. Um... I think I'm gonna go with the Holy Relic. And I think, believe it or not, I'm actually gonna swap this out for our crit chance because we have a lot of crit chance built up. So I'm gonna swap those two out. And uh, we don't have to worry about taking the ring that we have uh, to the well at all. Uh, because it's already ours, it's already a base. We only need to worry about extracting items uh, that we don't currently have equipped for us. Uh, so now that we've done that, we can now look around the level itself. Uh, the level stretches out in an infinite direction all around us. Uh, and you'll be able to pretty much discern, as long as you don't extract anything, you can pretty much discern how far away you are from the starting point of the map. Uh, solely based off of that well icon that's on our, our, uh, on our screen. Uh, but we can pretty much go out any direction, and the map is going to stretch out infinitely. As far as I'm concerned, there really isn't an end to any of this. And uh, from time to time, you'll actually find uh, like hidden treasures and whatnot on the uh, map. I even came across an event where I had to change these, uh, like, uh, like follow these um, weird sparks that were hanging in the sign, uh, uh, like uh, hanging in the sky in the frost level, the frozen depths. And there was like an elite at the end of following on it. I think that's how that worked out, honestly. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and increase the crit chance of our lightning strikes. And the enemies are thinning out a little bit here, which makes me think that we're about to get rushed soon as well. We do have about 17 minutes and 20 seconds on the clock for the round. Uh, as we get closer to the end, the enemy raids will get harder, of course, but we will also in, uh, run into more elites, basically. And if we manage to beat the final boss of the area, we'll get one of those agony shards we could take to make passive upgrades on our characters. And then we'll be given the option to leave. You do not have to leave, but you are given the option to leave. I've never s attempted to stay because 30 minute runs is pretty much like the gold, like the Goldilocks zone for this sort of thing. I believe. I think most people are like 30 minutes and out. Longer than that, you're really kind of over overstaying your welcome. Honestly, um, I wouldn't mind if some of the the stuff was shorter. It looks like we took some damage there, so we got that healing thing on the ground. And then, uh, yeah, if there were rounds that were shorter with the option to extend 30 minutes, I'd be better off probably with that one. Uh, and then we're going to go with the proficiency or proficient stance for additional shock chance and our spark damage. 
Yeah. And I wonder if you can see traits and abilities. Oh, there's a traits and abilities there. Can we see our spark chance? Uh, we have a 24% chance to cause spark. Okay. And I believe that to be everything that's in our roster causes the chance for spark to happen. And it looks like we hit a magnet. I didn't even realize that we hit one. Uh, we'll go ahead and do crit damage or the uh, damage increase on meteor. And we just saw those enemies race in, which makes me feel like maybe we got more enemies coming in soon as well. Uh, we could also do crit bonus since we're getting a lot of crit chance here. Having that additional bonus will add up and be very effective. I'm going to go with some more health regen as well. The good news is a lot of these enemies that come in with the shields, as long as we hit them, they're not really going to be too much of a concern for us. Because they do stay uh, in place once they've been hit. They kind of hunker down a little bit. Now it looks like we have this roly-poly-like enemy chasing after us. And now he is down. All right. Uh, let's see. We also have scattered debris meteor spawns two additional smaller projectiles. Upon impact, bigger area increases projectiles with 50% efficiency. Or areas hit by meteor each uh, catch on fire, inflicting burning to all enemies. Uh, I, I want to do scattered debris. We'll do, I want to do movement speed. Just because being a nimble, tanky sorceress could be pretty good as well. Our health has managed to catch up to us too, by the way. Uh, we managed to have a full health bar, which I'm pretty happy about. And uh, we'll go ahead and do extra health. All lucky sevens. I say we're doing a fairly decent job. I, I feel better now that we've uh, more or less capped out our health again. Run through here. We'll keep on making our way to the east. The northeast, that direction. I tend to feel like I can see things better whenever we go in a northern or, you know, well, like a northern direction. And since we came from the west, might as well just do northeast. And hopefully, after we kill a whole bunch of enemies, we'll be getting another magnet in a near future. Just so that way we have a way to collect all this XP that's probably behind us that we're leaving there. Um, we'll do the multi-strike chance. Extra projectiles, always a good thing. Let's see, we'll head this way, I think. Try to avoid all these. We got a movement speed buff there to drop on the ground. And uh, by the way, you can also choose to have the game like auto attack for you. Um, auto attacking isn't really a feature that I care for on the sorcerers. It doesn't really matter since her attack pretty much hits everyone around you. But if you're playing something like the exterminator, the exterminator made choice a weapon is a flamethrower. And obviously you could be a little bit more targetable with that one. I'm gonna go ahead and get ourselves a crit damage bonus. Looks like we have a healing spot right there because we did take a bit of damage. Something is firing these purple orbs. I wonder if we have there is an elite. There he goes. I'm going to try to avoid all this. We're getting blocked into a corner, though. I'm going to take a whole bunch of damage. Okay. Uh, things are getting very dangerous for us. Can I hit this? 
There's 50 health from that one. That's good to know. Oh, my God. And then we just took a crap ton of damage there. What was that a solid? Okay, that was a uh, pile of money. Let's see in the corner. If the enemies manage to thin out just a little bit, I might be able to get closer to the boss in an effort to, you know, kill him. We do have a potion over here to the left. They did do a good job of making indicators for health potions. I think health potions were being missed by some people. Maybe they heard complaints that, you know, sometimes it gets scattered or lost in the fray. Uh, let's go ahead and do some more crit chance. And then I'll make up the crit chance loss we took from no, uh, for not having that ring equipped anymore. And if I stay by him, hopefully I'll be allowed to do this additional damage. Although we're not burning him as fast as I would like. Uh, let's see. We also have multi-strike, attack speed, and force. Yeah, sure. Why not? It's funny. I thought I was getting attacked by a wave of enemies there, and it's just dead bodies flying at me. And uh, we are missing some damage. It's probably my fault for taking so many tanky options. But I did want to be very survivable. And that's on me. Uh, let's see. We'll go ahead and do some more damage with our weapon attack speed and multi-strike. Get the health right there. Trying to make my way towards a door. So that we don't get cornered. And this guy's lasted a while. By the time we kill this guy, we might have another elite show up. So we do got to be careful about that. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at more health. And somehow I managed to avoid a majority of that damage there. Some, I don't even know how I did it. We got some range units starting to track in. But we do also almost have this elite down as well. For this mini boss. Let's see. Let's go ahead and go with the 30% damage on the orbs. And I would just really, really like it if uh, you died. There you go. And now we got three more choices. It looks like we don't have any of these. When an elite or a boss appears for 50 seconds, regenerate 0.5% uh, for if at full health, spawns power ups. And then the spike drew, uh, drop uh, boots when you hit, drops 10 spikes that deal 100 damage and sends enemies on contact. Spikes also drop when moving. Or the 20, per, uh, 20 additional block strength. Um. Honestly, probably the, the helmet. And I might be uh, considering going back to our well to extract that. And we do also have another elite out. He's not doing anything cool or special right now. He's just kind of following us along, seeing what's going on. I am A-OK -okay with that. We are a fair good distance away from the well. So we do have to keep that in mind that if we want to go back to drop off this uh, helmet for extraction, we do have uh, quite a bit of a walk to do that. Oh, we got an ability here. Uh, electrifying strikes. I guess we're going to pick up another uh, upgrade to our lightning strikes. Which I'm okay with. But I am concerned about it, our output again. Uh, at first, I thought we were doing really good. I thought we had enough. I think I was leaning too heavily on some of our defensive passes. Mostly because I was concerned that some of the sits we were getting, uh, that we were taking, were diminishing our health quite a bit.
Uh, let's see. Go ahead and do another 10% damage boost. And let's see. We'll do that. Oh, we got another ability. Oh, we finally got another like ability we can take. I'm gonna do arcane splinters. Just as it does do some AOE. You can see them right there. And then they'll retract back to me after a time, I believe. Or maybe they just shoot out for me. I thought they retracted. Looks like we've done one million damage over the course of all of our runs. Somehow I feel like that's misleading. I feel like I've done that already before. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the uh, extra pickup strength. I know I'm making a big circle essentially, but I know we also left a whole bunch of XP on the ground. All right, 20% damage on the needles. I want to say there's there might also be another elite somewhere in this group. Or at least I thought there was. Oh, there's also another little holy zone in there. We'll go with the attack speed. Ouch. They have very random movement, which is making it hard to predict where they're going. Oh, we have a magnet hand. I'm gonna go for that one for sure. Uh, let's go ahead and go with the force. Ouch. We'll grab this. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and start working on ability upgrades for our cells. Phantom Needle getting a whole bunch of damage upgrades. And then I think we're also going to work on the damage of Arcane Splinters. We'll do crit uh, bonus. Crit bonus. Yeah. I want to say eventually Arcane Needles uh, shoots out multiple needles as you level it up. Got a little heal zone there. We'll go ahead and pick that one up. And we're a little bit closer to our bucket to extract out our helmet that we found earlier uh, we are about six minutes out from extraction so time has kind of flown by I've been just busy trying to avoid getting hit and taking down an elite I know that uh, the third elite we fight and fought the uh, the guy who sent out the waves are arcane energy it felt like he lasted a while um, we'll start working on meteor strike upgrades And if we get lucky enough, maybe, just maybe, we'll find um, another magnet along the way. I, I held up from talking there because I was thinking there was another elite around, and I'm pretty confident there is. Uh, I just didn't see him yet. It's concerning. I mean, we're not going the same way. There's a magnet. Uh, we'll go ahead and do the... What do we want to do here? We could probably do with the crit damage bonus on the Phantom Needles.
And by the way, the other benefit of having the well at extraction is because of the fact that regardless of whether or not we die from here on out, as long as we extract that helmet, we'll still have it uh, to purchase at the well vendor guy. Um, let's do some more block strength. Oh, we did take some hits there, unfortunately. But we are at the well. Let's gotta do that, and then we just put this piece of gear in there and send it up. And now that is ready for extraction, and now we can focus on whatever elite is over here doing all this AOE to us. If we could find them, that is. Unless there is no elite. Which would be kind of interesting. I, I've not seen a, an event like this happen where there isn't an elite around. Could be just an effect of the stage. Oh, we got a health thingy over there. Oh, we're taking so much damage. We died. We have a blessing. I forgot about that. Oh, there's the elite. Well, we lucked out ever so slightly. That isn't to say we aren't in danger. We're still in a lot of danger. I'm gonna try to make my way on the outside of that. These little balls rolling at me. They're gonna be the, the most problematic. I'm going to take a whole bunch of damage here, and somehow... I didn't take nearly as much as I thought I would. I thought my entire health bar was about to disappear. Definitely more overwhelming sense of urgency in this game, as far as the enemies are concerned. The, uh, the guys are, the dead corpse is flying at me. It's really kind of throwing me off with what's going out. Uh, let's see. There weren't really any offensive options there. Uh, we did hit one of our goals for uh, the sorceress. So that is good news. Oh, we got two heal sparks or two uh, healing lights here. We'll take advantage of those. Nice. We have another third one. I'm going to take it anyways. Oh, no. Maybe a bad idea. Based off all the corpse meatballs. All right, what else we got here? Attack speed for the needles. And I've basically just been going around in circles this whole time. I just want to get rid of this elite and or thin out these enemies enough to where I can get to the elite. I just want to get rid of him. Come on. Can we fight? Can we fight? Seems to be we're able to do a, a decent job of staying on. There's not too many enemies sticking around just yet. That isn't to say they aren't coming. At least we have less meatballs chasing us right now. Oh, and he's dead. Now I just gotta hold out, wait for the fire to diminish so I can pick up whatever this is. Uh, Scars of Toil, I don't think we're gonna be extracting out with them, but uh, you know, we can try to do something. We're taking a lot of damage, a lot of damage, a lot of damage. The 
Yeah, there's got to be another elite up there. Or at least, it might be two. We've got 50 second, uh, 57 seconds left before the boss shows up. And one thing to note about the final boss of each zone is that the enemies don't diminish. I think that there's a point at which they do stop, but like for the most part, while the fight is going on, you're still going to have hordes of enemies on screen trying to eat your face. All right, uh, let's see. Horse in range, fancy needles. And we have 15 seconds left on the clock for the final boss monster of this area to show up. Looks like we have some healing areas down. All right, so, oh shoot, is, this isn't the same guy, is it? I don't think that's the, the, the boss we're supposed to be fighting, or the, uh, the main boss. Or it could be. I guess I never really saw the elite that we were fighting a minute ago. Let's get away from that. Uh, we'll go with the base crit chance. I don't want to be anywhere near these. Pick up the healing zone. The unfortunate thing is it seems like his attacks go through walls. Ours do, ours do not, unless they're like from the sky. But luckily, like two of our attacks at least are going to come from the sky. Block 90 attacks in one run, so we did get our block rate up enough. What is this thing that we have under us? I believe this might be a damage bonus. Yeah, I think we're doing way more damage to him while we had that up. To pick up the healing. Just a little bit more health left on this guy. Avoid those orbs, avoid those orbs. Avoid these orbs. I think increasing our uh, our movement speed did help us out just a smidge there. Uh, looks like we got ourselves another Agony Spark, or Agony uh, Torment Shard, that's what they're called. And as we get the Torment Shard, we can then conclude the run if we want, and we are going to do just that, I believe. So from that, it looks like we reached level 86. Here's all the quests on the right side of the screen that we managed to accomplish. Uh, unfortunately, we can't see what they do, but we do know that we got the one for blocking. Uh, we also unlocked a new trait over here. And uh, here's the damage you did with all your skills and stuff. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and head back to camp. Looks like we collected about 5,000 gold. Uh, I'm going to collect the sorceress. It doesn't really matter. You can swap characters at any time. But I do want to see uh, what we didn't unlock. Uh, applied 20 stacks of spark on a single enemy. So we didn't do that. We applied a... 48,139 applications to Spark. I know this because I'm pretty sure I didn't have anything towards that goal. I'll have to check back at the beginning of the video. Uh, but we did do... We did do some of this stuff, I'm pretty confident. There was a... We got a... Oh, did we get a... I think we got Ring of Thunder unlocked. So I don't remember getting that one either. We did do the blocking of 99 attacks in one goal. Uh, there was also something else, I swear, in the the sorceress. I could be wrong. 
But I believe now that we can go over here and just to showcase it off a little bit, we can come over to here to the uh, the well keeper. Hello. And there's the helmet we found. And I believe oh, we can even right check me. this now. And that well, uh, that ring of thunder is that in here? Or did I already have that equipped? Oh, I already had it equipped. Okay, so we already had that one. Um, but yeah, that is uh. Halls of Torment 1.0. That's a little bit of what's going on. We can go ahead and throw in our Torment uh, shard if we want to. We can even come in here and based off how well you do, you can also put like XP modifiers on here that also do different things for you as well. Uh, so that being said, if you like the sort of content and you want to see more videos for like Halls of Torment here on the channel, make sure you like, subscribe, comment down below what you think of the game. That being said, you guys take care and I'll catch you all in my next video. Later.